Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending February 7th. First up in the news, if you haven't heard this already, you might um, want to take a chance and get down to Radio Shack this week, and they're going to have a big sale because they're filing for bankruptcy again. This time it's Chapter 11 bankruptcy, and it looks like uh, the finance company that controls the interest in them have basically turned over the uh, General Wireless, which is the one that uh, calls the shots on this of the bankruptcy, are turning over to Sprint. The, uh, about 1,500 to 2,400 of the 4,000 stores that they're willing to keep open. So Sprint is saying right now, and this could be changing just as things go through court and stuff like that, but it seems like Sprint is going to try to keep at least close to 2,000 stores open, and they will be uh, double branding stuff. So you'll be able to go in the Sprint store and be able to get Radio Shack and Sprint pro products. So it doesn't look like Radio Shack is completely down and out, but definitely there are going to be a lot less stores. And I checked in my area, too, and two of the stores closest to me are scheduled to be uh, totally closed down, so I don't know how far it will be. I will have to go if I want to go to a combination Sprint Radio Shack store. <clears throat> a lot of memories from the 70s and 80s at that store, but uh, I can't say that I've really done enough business with them, with them in the last couple of years to keep them in business. I've I've probably spent a total of maybe 6 or $7 on maybe a few cables and adapters here and there, so not nearly enough in my uh, estimation to keep them going, and I think for, with a lot of people it's kind of the same story, so... Uh, I uh, hope something comes of this uh, reorganization and stuff like that, but um, as of now, it does look like they'll at least survive in some way, shape, or form. This one is from BBC News. Obama seeks to raise NASA funding. This is something we do need to get on, and I've talked about many times that we do need to up the funding, and even more than what he's calling for if we're actually going to eventually send men back to the moon or to Mars or send men to asteroids and stuff like that. But U.S. President Barack Obama has requested $18.5 billion to run the country's civil space agency. That's uh, about a half a billion dollars increase from what their budget was in fiscal 2015. Um, some interesting things that they're talking about canceling, though, they are going to, uh, his budget actually has zero funding for the opportunity. Now, that's fiscal, fiscal 2016, so I think that will probably begin in June of this year, um, would be fiscal 2016 budget. It probably runs June to June like most, so um, there's still some time left, and they also said Congress has to approve this, so funding could reappear, and I guess the uh, Opportunity Rover only costs like $14 million a year to operate, but it's also kind of on its last legs, as I've been reporting to their TDD reports. The memory is getting worse and worse. Um, they're having drive problems. Sometimes they have to drive it backwards because the, the wheels are just not, you know, performing optimally anymore. So <clears throat> you also got to figure that they're sending another version of the Curiosity ro Rover, too. The Curiosity is there and going strong, and they're going to send a, another... Uh, upgraded version of it to Mars in a few years, so um, that may be another decision of why they decided to cancel that. Um, they've also gotten the budget to um, another Landsat satellite, to Landsat 8, which they've sent up recently to keep mapping the Earth and any changes in the surface of the Earth. Um, they're wanting in the budget enough money to be able to produce a Landsat 9 so that it's ready to go by the time Landsat 8 starts getting a little bit of age on it and stuff like that, but basically what they want to do is get enough budget increase in the NASA budget so we have to so we can stop actually paying the Russians rental to go aboard their spacecraft. And uh, that's going to be the real fight with Congress to get enough in our budget so that we can actually start doing that. And uh, on the commercial part of it, hiring Boeing and um, SpaceX and other corporations like that to be able to take our astronauts and have uh, the U.S. actually putting our own astronauts aboard the International Space Station instead of uh, having to uh, use the Russians as a taxi service. These next two reports are coming from Navy Thomas. Uh, military, this is from Fox News, military continues development of stealth, stealth hybrid motorcycle. The U.S. military is moving forward with the development of the silent motorcycle for its covert ops. Technical details are still hush-hush, but the team behind the Silent Hawk is what it's called. It was recently awarded a Phase Two Small Business Innovation Research Grant um, from DARPA. And this is going to have a modular power system, too. Um, it's going to have a range of about 50 miles and I think a uh, top speed of about 80 miles per hour going to run on diesel fuel but also have an electric component and they're going to have a, a quick swap out for the battery so that they can just uh, not have to you know, recharge or anything like that. They can just swap out the battery pack and keep on going. Uh, say it's going to end up costing around $15,000 a piece and uh, that's not the only project that they're interested in too. The Pentagon is still working on the, the Zero Motorcycles project because they've already, Zero Motorcycles is already providing motorcycles for a U.S. Special Operations Command Fleet and uh, their battery-powered MX uh, bikes are in use right now. So 
got at least two different people that are going to supply the military with some new uh, hybrid or electric motorcycle technology. Probably pretty good for a silent and quiet scouting. And this next one, sent by Navy Thomas Aide, is from Fox News. 150 years after sinking, Confederate submarine slowly reveals its secrets. If any of you have followed this, I think back in 2004, they actually took the remains of the crew out of the submarine and uh, gave them a, a burial um, and a, an official military honors burial and stuff like that. But now they're actually working on getting all the crust and all the... Uh, debris and stuff like that uh, off of the hull itself so they can actually take a look at it and they're kind of specul speculating. I remember before when they talked about that the crew died on there even though they attacked a, uh, a ship, the Union ship, they attacked it and uh, ended up damaging it and uh, ended up you know, taking themselves down and taking their crew out. They think now instead of the crew dying of uh, lack of oxygen they think the crew was actually uh, knocked unconscious by the force of the explosion itself. And they say they're going to re really review more about it. They've got some information here about it, but they're going to review a little bit more about what they think was actually the cause of the sinking and a lot of more details that they're going to uh, in the near future. They say now about 70% of the outside hull has been revealed. The last remaining areas have been described as forensic hot spots. So I guess they're saving the most uh, detailed areas or the best areas to investigate for last. And uh, so, uh, let's see, it says... Um, I would. This is uh, the guy that's in charge of it. His name is Marty. Can he? And his his words are: I would like, I would have to lie to you if I said we had not. As far as you know, revealing. I guess they already know um, some of the cause of what sank it, but it's too easy to talk, too early to talk about it yet. He said we have a submarine that is encrypted. It's like an Enigma machine. So, I guess they're just uh, kind of getting people uh, kind of ready for the reveal of what's going on and everything like that. So, if you're interested in Civil War memorabilia or stuff like that. Um, Civil War artifacts. It's an interesting article and something if I uh, get some updates on it, I'll definitely keep track of. And last up, this is kind of a gadgety kind of deal. I'll show you a picture. This is just kind of fascinating. Me, my friend Ivan from Croatia sent this to me. And this is a company called liquidimageco.com and uh, their logo on the top is just liquid image. But it seems to me they just take um, regular made in China, conventional um, type of action cameras and just uh, redesign the outside cases and make them into fascinating type of, uh, especially goggles and stuff like that. That's what I think is really cool about it. This one right here, I really like this goggle and it's not, right now it's not available. I guess it sells out according to them. It sells out very quickly so you're going to have to wait until they get more orders of this but I think this is just really cool the way this is laid out. But there's lots of pictures of other ones too. It's action for uh, water sports, uh, for snowmobilers, for uh, just um, all kinds of adventure and action and stuff like that. And I had never, until uh, Ivan sent this to me, I had never heard of the Liquid Image Company. But, uh, yeah, I'll show you just a, a few pictures as I'm talking of it here. But uh, basically, I think it's going to be where we're getting to the fact that um, once the quality and everything gets about as good as it can possibly get, especially in like a 1080p, 60 frames per second and stuff like that, where pretty much everybody can buy the basic, uh, oh, I don't know, what do you call it? Uh, little module or whatever that contains all that stuff it's just going to be basically designing it in different ways so um, and making cool designs out of the basically the modular design because <clears throat> eventually it is just going to become a commodity and nobody's is going to be significantly better than the other so it's just how good of a design and how good of a menu and how good you can uh, make it that uh, the people want to buy it so if you get a chance to check this out as usual all the links to everything will be down in the description below and uh, that's about it for this week. Thank you, everybody, for contributing. Thank you for everybody that continues to contribute. I will catch you next week.